Hello and welcome back to the Ten Born. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in this video we're going to hopefully uh, take care of a project that's been on my list for a long time now. Uh, if you watched the last video where I made the uh, Milvice Caddy and used the slit and saw with the coolant, uh, you might have noticed on that I got pretty wet. Uh, the slit and saw, coolant running on the slit and saw pretty much uh, drowned at everything in the uh, surrounding area around uh, around the mill. So what we're going to do today is look at making a uh, reflective shield to use on the mill, not only for coolant but for uh, chips, uh, use for use also on the lathe for slinging coolant and also for slinging hot chips. I've got this piece of uh, it's by brand uh, Duraplex. Uh, it's acrylic sheet. It's, uh, let's see, 18 by 24, uh, 80 thousandths thick. And what we're going to do is cut a piece of this. I believe I marked off about a 12 inch piece. Yeah, a 6 by 12. And we're going to fold in the ends just a little bit. But we're going to mount that, the flex arm we're going to use for it is this piece of uh, uh, coolant pipe itself. When I installed the coolant system on the uh, lathe and the mill and the uh, surface grinder a couple years ago, it might have even been three years ago now, uh, I was looking for something like this. Obviously you can bend them in any shape. Uh, and Honestly, right now, I don't remember if I uh, bought this on eBay or Amazon, but it come in a bundle of either 10 or 12 of these units. They came with some flare nozzles like this, and they come with some uh, a set of just the pointed ones, which I use on, the, uh, on my machines. But on the other end, I got just this little on-off valve, what a, a quarter inch NPT. So this is what we're going to use. They're, they're reasonably stout. So this is what we're going to use to hold the shield. This end down here is where uh, we'll, we'll cut out the uh, webbing on the side of this and clamp this over and bolt it onto the piece of acrylic. On the other end, got this piece of inch and a half by inch and a half aluminum round stock. Very light, yes. What we're going to do in one end is drill and tap it for a quarter inch NPT. In the other end, we're going to bore it out for two of these, I guess they call them uh, nickel magnets maybe. Uh, they're, I've got two of these uh, very strong magnets uh, with a screw in between. We're going to bore it out for that to mount flush up in there and then thread the remaining web in between for this 1032. So let's turn over to the lathe now and get the work on this piece done. One more comment before we get started on this. Uh, I'm recording this video a little bit ahead of time and I'm going to schedule it for uh, airing on uh, October the 23rd. October 23rd, yeah. If everything goes to schedule, tomorrow, October the 24th, the wife and I will be leaving uh, out of Raleigh-Durham Airport, Raleigh, North Carolina, flying to Tucson, Arizona to spend a, to spend a week in southeast Arizona. Uh, that area is where my wife and I started our marriage. We got married on a Saturday and the following Thursday, we jumped in a 1967 Volkswagen Beetle and started driving cross country to Davis Monthan Air Force Base in Tucson, Arizona. Now we fully understand that nothing in Arizona, nothing in Tucson is going to be like it was when we were there 50 years ago, but that was in 1971. But we just want to go back to the area. We really like Arizona. Two years ago, we uh, made a trip to northern Arizona, uh, home based in Flagstaff, 
and visited many of the sites there. So as you're seeing this, uh, we should be well, we should be ready to begin our 2001 vacation and again in southwest, southeast Arizona. Alright, so let's let's start this with just a uh, center drill. And we want to uh, drill this, drill and tap it for the quarter inch NPT. And I've already got my uh, as a matter of fact, for this project, I've got tape on several of the tools to indicate the depth. Seems like every time I get ready to use this uh, digital uh, uh, caliper that I put on the, uh, to use as a DRO on the tailstock, the battery's dead in it. Uh, kind of aggravating. I get tired of putting batteries in it, so this time I just mark and tape things off. Slow the RPM down just a little bit. And for the quarter inch NPT, again, that's what this fitting on here is. We'll use, uh, of course, a quarter inch NPT tap. And like the other, this is a tapered tap. So I've got it marked to depth. And you know what? That don't want to fit in the chuck. It's a little over a half inch. So what we'll do is put the, the tap guide in the chuck itself. And then bring our tail stock up. That should keep the uh, the tap straight. Let's get a little bit of WD-40 on there. I think that should have it sufficiently tapped. We will try our piece just to be sure. And yes, that's starting in there fine. If you notice, this is the same material as I said before, that I use on the lathe, the mill, and the surface grinder for the uh, for the coolant. A little, a little bit of a burr on there. Now we want to turn this piece around and bore it out to hold our magnets. Bore it out and then tap it as well. And since that's such a short piece in the uh, in the lathe chuck, I'm going to use my ball bearing guide here. This idea I got from uh, uh, John Mills uh, over in England. And if I'm a lot of the stuff that I do on my channel I pick up from other YouTube creators and this shield that I'm building I've seen this something similar done on several different YouTube channels and I honestly don't remember which one I saw it on first but uh, I'm sure many of you have seen these before and this will just be my interpretation alright that should have that Perpendicular in the chuck now. And 
after this is bored out for the magnets, it's going to be uh, tap for 1028. But I'm going to go ahead and drill it. I'm sorry, 1032. I'm going to go ahead and drill it into the void that we made on the other side uh, for the quarter NPT. This will take care of two things. Number one, it will it will be our hole that we will tap for the uh, 1032, but it will also be a lead-in uh, for the hole we're going to create to bore out for the magnets. And you've probably seen me do this before, but I'm putting an end mill in the drill chuck. This is a half inch end mill. And what I want to do is half inch end mill in here. I've got it marked with tape as well. The two magnets are uh, just a little over three eighths of an inch. So I'm going to go in a, about four hundred thousandths is where I've got this uh, tape. And since this is not a center cutting uh, end mill, the uh, hole that we drilled in there will take care of that. I don't know whether you can see it on the camera or not, or on the video, but the chips push my tape back. So, let me see right quick about how much depth I have here. Alright, that's a little, uh, little deeper than I wanted, uh, but what we can easily do, if the magnet's set too deep in there, we can put a spacer behind them. I think what I'll do though, that's zero. I'll slide the carriage stop down here and we'll come in our four hundred thousandths and lock the carriage stop right there. That way we don't uh, we don't bore too deep. I'll take several finesses on this before I attempt to uh, before I before I take a measurement. taking about 80 thousandths per cut which is 40 thousandths per side all right let me get a couple measurements here our desired is 1.125 I'm sorry, 1.250 inch and a quarter. And we're at 950. So we got 300 thousandths left to go. All right, that says we got 60 more thousandths. Let's see if our magnets fit now. And this does not have to be a tight fit by any means, just need clearance, which it's got. And that is recessed in there. Just don't want the magnets proud out this edge out here. I think that's just right. Now we'll tap that hole inside.
I'm using a two fluted taper tap for this. And I'm letting it stick out the drill chuck here about as much as I can because I want it to reach in there, reach all the way through with this taper tap. That's the that's the desire anyhow. Turn our RPM down. Get these extra tools out of the way up here. Finger on the stop button. And as always, I forgot to put a taper on that hole before I started the thread. So our magnet should fit. Just like that. Probably will take that out. Magnet sucked it right in there. Well, I hope I don't have to take the chuck off to get our work out. Yeah, I think I just got to get the jaws out of the way. Okay, so here's what we have, and that's the way it will, will mount to the lathe or the mill or whatever I use it on. So let's turn over to the workbench now and look at our piece of acrylic. Okay, I'm ready to cut, our, cut out our piece of acrylic now. And if you hadn't already figured it out, there's a protective plastic on both sides of this now. Uh, once that plastic is pulled off, the acrylic will be clear. I just realized I don't have a working uh, bandsaw here in a tin barn that's got a deep enough throat on it uh, to cut this out. So I'm going to try this cutoff saw, uh, this cutoff blade on this air tool. I'll carry the piece of acrylic, acrylic around to the dirty side of the tin barn. I won't try to carry the camera in there. But I'll bring you back once I get this cut out. All right, that little cutoff saw did did really good for cutting this off. Let's see, this was the edge I cut. Uh, once I cut it, I carried it over to the uh, 2 by 72 uh, belt sander and just sanded it to to the line. While I was while I was working on that too, I went ahead and took this. Uh, uh, flare in and split it open on both sides of course so that it will slide over this and I marked a couple for a couple holes to go through here uh, that will put bolts in. Now I'm sure you probably realize it but this stuff uh, you can put it the length whatever length you want. As a matter of fact I think this is probably about one and a half pieces here. It might even be two pieces. Uh, but it makes it very easy to shorten or lengthen as necessary. I got a center line on my piece of material and I've got these two holes lined up. I'm going to drill one of them. Let's see, I believe it would be easier. If I just take that off, won't be so much weight hanging off the end. And I'm going to use two number six screws. I'll put the first one in and that'll be absolutely 
certain to hold it in place in. Put the other one, other one in from the other side just to make it look a little better. All right, I'm going to get those screws uh, nuts on these. And then we're going to come back and put a, just a little bend in this edge over here. Here's a test piece that I tried and to fold that in just a little bit. So we'll come back in just a moment and do the same thing to this. I've got a piece of acrylic clamped down now to the uh, workbench with an inch and a quarter hanging over the edge. That's what this fold on this test piece was and that looked pretty good so we're going to try it over here now the protective film I still have on the back side I, I realize this piece is going to get scratched up pretty quick with chips flying and moving around but I like to keep it uh, like to keep it scratch free as long as I can I have pull back the protective coating on this side because what we're going to do now is apply some heat and I tried my hair dryer but my hair dryer hasn't had much use in many years and it wouldn't get hot enough so we're going to use a torch here do not want to to melt it by any means I just want to soften it up and as I'm doing that I'm going to put a little pressure down here on the edge and I'm just eyeballing this thing the angle and that sh that looks like that's good enough all we're wanting is just a little bit of a turn back on this edge to to be a deflector for the chips and the coolant and so forth. I'm going to get this other side set up right quick. Piece of metal got a little bit warm. Not sure if you can tell it or not but the weight of the uh, piece of acrylic itself is actually doing the bending here. Put a little bit of pressure on it and go just a little more. Alright, there's our deflection on each end. I think we're about ready to put this all together. Let me get a few tools cleaned out of the way here and we'll snap it back together. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, short little video on this simple project. Uh, you can see this is how I anticipate using it over here on the uh, lathe. The magnets holding it to the top of the lathe. Arms has been around and this should protect from hot chips uh, and coolant flying. Need to get in the house now in your time. Get my bags packed because tomorrow this time I should be on there. Y'all take care and I'll see you in the next video.